medallion will guide you to High Sanctuary, my son. From there, the Holy One will direct you to the great city called Kathmandu. But this you must never forget. Your path is written in the jade. Your destiny is not. Climbing. Oh, I can't believe it. Nepal. Did you ever think we'd get here? <laughs> we worked hard enough for it. Speaking of work, we better hit these course materials again. Have you checked the section on mythology? <laughs> Some pretty weird stuff in here. Dinner is just as lousy as lunch. You know what you mean? There's almost a sense, I mean, in the way it's presented. That it's fact, not fiction. Hello. Hello, dear. How was dinner? It tasted like doot. Andrew. What was that, young man? I said dinner tasted like doot. Uh, I heard what you said. Well, it did. That's enough, Andrew. He's right. That's exactly what it tasted like. Lily. What is going on here? We've been on this train for 12 hours, and we've only seen you twice. I'm sorry. We've been so preoccupied with all of this. Try to understand, dear. Daddy and I have worked so long for these exchange professorships. Now we've been given the opportunity to do the most important work of our lives. Be patient with us. Long enough so we can do it right. Please. You and Andrew go to your compartment now. When we get to Janikpur, very early in the morning, then we have a long, hard bus trip into Kathmandu. You get some sleep, okay? Yeah, I'm pretty tired anyway. Good night. instead of on this train. Not me. Don't you miss your friends? What about school? School? Well, you kidding. I don't know. This whole trip just came at the wrong time. My friends, ball games, dances. Jimmy? OK, OK, Jimmy. I mean, it was so great. The last semester, it was like, it was so great. You know what I mean, Andrew? Andrew?
Do you smell the jasmine, miss? What? The night flowers, the jasmine. I asked if you could smell their perfume. No. No, I... I smell smoke. Smoke from the engine. Ah, well, we choose what we wish to choose. Who are you? I am Sri Lan. You might say I am a teacher. And you, miss? Lily McLeod. Lily. Ah, another flower. You're a Brahmin, aren't you? A holy man. So, you know something of our culture? I've been reading. We're moving to Nepal. And you do not wish to go to Nepal. Is it not so, Lily McLeod? so much, Renan. I mean, to understand. Knowledge is easy. Understanding, that is difficult. You know, for example, that you're feeling unhappy. You may even think you know the reasons. But still, you do not understand. And without understanding, I think you will remain unhappy. The answer is within you. Do not search for it outside. Perhaps, Lily, understanding is like the jasmine's perfume. The jasmine's perfume? You chose to smell the smoke from the locomotive. I chose the scent from the night flowers that bloom on these hillsides. Life, Lily McLeod. There are many choices. It was empty when I found it. When you found it? When you found it? Are you crazy? I've got a ticket. Do you? Let's see your ticket. I do not know what this is. A ticket? You can't be on a train without a ticket. But I am on the train. Well, you certainly can't be in my bed without a ticket. Not even with one. I am sorry. I did not know of this ticket. How may I receive such a thing? You buy it. You can buy one from the conductor. Do you have any money? Oh, I do not have the currency of this land, but I have this. Will it do? Are these diamonds? That is the English word, yes. Is this enough for a ticket? Let me see one. Um, I do not know much about the railways. I came to this room purely by chance. What's your name? Johar. Well, listen, Johar, 
Any one of these stones can buy you a hundred tickets. If you know it's good for you, you'll put them away. Don't show them to anybody. But how then will I obtain a ticket? I must get to Kathmandu. Stay out of sight until the train stops. He can hide here. No, he can't. Now, uh, you have to find your own hiding place now. There's the door, okay? Good night, okay? Get up, you son of a swine. What are you doing in first class? Let me see your ticket. Tick box, that's name. I'll teach you to be so insolent with me. Johar, what's going on? Hey, I'm sorry for the disturbance, miss. It seems you know this boy. Yeah, uh, he's my servant. Your servant? Yeah, my servant. A thousand buttons, miss. Get in here. McLeod, I presume? Welcome to Kathmandu. Harry Hadley Smythe, professor of Asian history here at your service, ma'am. Oh, please call me Maureen. Then I'm Jeff. Ah, yes, of course you are. I've seen your resume. The tickets are pretty cheap. Now, I'm going to lend you some rupees. Get a ticket on the same bus we're going on. I cannot accept your money. Fine, stay here then. She said lunch, not give to her. Don't make a hairball out of it. That's right. Now you can sell one of your diamonds to a jeweler in Kathmandu and pay me back. Okay? Thank you, Lily. It's okay. Now the tickets are sold over there. Well, here's our luggage and our children. We can forget about the bus, kids. The university sent somebody down in a car to pick us up. You mean we're not going on the bus? Oh, thank goodness, no. But, Mom, I've got to go on the bus. I mean, Andrew, Andrew and I, we really want to go on the bus. Oh, don't be silly. Now let's find somebody to help us with our luggage. I will help you, sir. I don't know. Thank you. We'll find a porter. It's OK, Dad. He's a friend of us. Oh, really? Yeah, from Calcutta. His name is Johar, but we call him Joe. Johar, huh? Yes, sir. From Calcutta. No, sir. From the mountains. I met your children last night on the train. Uh, we talked. We became friends, sir. Now, may I help you with your luggage? Quite a machine you've got here, Professor. Uh, it's all right if you like that sort of thing. Not mine, of course, courtesy of the university. But all things considered, I suppose it's about the best thing for this part of the world, right? <laughs> Dad? All right, let's snug it up, lad. Hello, hello. I say, a very interesting piece of jade you've got there, young fellow. Very nice indeed. Let me check. All right, good show. Off we go. Yeah, Harry, uh, the boy's missed his bus and he needs a lift in the town. Think we can oblige? Oh. All right, by me. You speak English very well, Johar. Uh, thank you, Mrs. McLeod. I have not had much practice. Where did you learn? Um, in my land, my village. There is a very learned man. 
he taught me. Do you speak any other languages? Uh, only a few. Uh, Hindi, Urdu, French, German, Italian, and the 13 languages of Nepal. Any others? None to speak of. Wait for me, huh? My horoscope was correct. What happened? We must hurry up. There is not much time. Come. I thought was so near. Luton, why now? Could you not have shared this with me before? I do not share it with you, no, my dear friend. I tell you, do what I am unable to do. Destroy. <laughs> Destroy it? Welcome to your new home. You must be Siobhan. I got your letter and I've been so looking forward to meeting you. Are you as good a cook as you say you are? Every bit and then some. But now all of you, come in, come in. Well, not I afraid. I'm uh, off to be humble about for work. Uh, now, you have the whole weekend to get settled in, but uh, I'll see you at the university on Monday, all right? Great. Yeah, Harry, how about dinner here uh, next Friday night? Perhaps Professor Godbuck will come. What a wonderful idea. I'll... Uh, I'll certainly mention it to him. Uh, Joha, lad, can I give you a lift? Uh, no thank you, sir. I can find my way. Where are you going to stay, Joha? I will find something. Do you have work, a job? No, madam, I do not. Shaban, um, can we use somebody around here uh, for room and board, say? If it'll work for those wages, I'll take them. Lord knows there's room enough in this old mansion. How about it, Joha? Would you like to stay here? Help Shaban? Very much, Mrs. McLeod. Come in. Well, Duan, burning the midnight oil, are we? No, I, I was just uh, reviewing some term papers. Sir. What are you up to at this time of the night? Oh, not much. I um, saw your light, thought I'd stop in. Have an invitation for you. Invitation? There's the uh, new archaeology professors, the McClouds. Dinner, a Friday night. Can you make it? I'd be delighted. Good. See you there. <laughs> Uh, 
What's burning? Oh, no. Don't tell me. You're not going to take up smoking again, are you? Filthy habit. Shame on you. Didn't anyone ever teach you to knock? I did knock. You did not hear me. After this, knock harder. I knocked very hard, Miss Lily. Miss Lily? I am a servant in this house. I must address you as a servant would. Is this the same guy who tried to kick me out of my own bed last night? My, how you've changed in 24 hours. Not so much. Then call me Lily. What do you want, anyhow? Breakfast is served. Wow, just like in the movies. <laughs> movies? Moving pictures. You've never seen moving pictures? Oh, yes. I, I know of this, but I did not know they served breakfast at the movies. You've never been, have you? Maybe we'll go sometime, but not for breakfast. No, you excuse me while I get dressed. I think she really wanted to get me out of the house. I think she simply wanted you to help me with the marketing. Doha, look! Isn't this, oh, what do you call it? Uh, Lhasa Apso? You may greet the dog now, Andrew. Are you sure? Yes, I am certain. Hello. This breed is thousands of years old. I know. My sister told me all about them. They guard temples, right? That is correct. They are the guardians of the most holy places. Your sister is very learned. Don't tell her that. Her head's too big already. I did not notice that. Her head seemed of normal size to me. No, no. Her head's not big. That just means she thinks she's smart. That's all. Oh. <laughs> And is she smart? She's okay, I guess. She likes you, you know. Oh, yes, the little dog. I like her, too. No, no, my sister. How about you? Do you like her? She's okay, I guess.
What was that you were doing? An exercise. I could see that. What was it called? Um, Sinbad. It's... It's very beautiful. Uh, Sinbad is very difficult. I am... Um... Andrew tells me you and he went to the marketplace. Uh, that is true. Johar, did you run away from home? No. I walked. <laughs> I mean, did you want to leave? No. Then why did you? Because it is my duty to become all that I can become. Your duty? Yes, an obligation. To who? To my family, also to myself. And that brought you to Kathmandu? Yes. I'm glad you came, Johar. I also am glad. What's it like where you come from? Different from here. In what way? Where I come from, people have never learned to be dishonest. Not to others, nor to themselves. That's wonderful. That's what I sense about you. One grain of dishonesty in you was there. Perhaps one grain. Thank you. Dinner was great, Siobhan. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, Mrs. McLeod, you have a fine family. Why, thank you, Professor. I like them, too. I should be uh, delighted to have you over for tea. Um, how about a tea tomorrow afternoon? We'd love to. Duan has a wonderful new bungalow over at the academic enclave. Right, Yuan, and in the very best section. Professor Gambathe, would you mind if I talked a little shop? Not at all. It's the section that you've prepared in the lesson plan. And do you want it taught exactly as written? Well, um... Budding archaeologists should be exposed to a little mythology. Oh, I quite agree. But not if the myths are presented as fact. And I'm afraid that's exactly the way you've written it. Only the parts I know to be fact. But, Professor, the city that is not there... Jeff, couldn't we continue this some other time? What's the city that is not there? Oh, it's a very old tale. It goes back hundreds of years, maybe thousands. Um... About an invisible city. An invisible city? Uh, yes, Lily. Uh, somewhere in the Himal. It, it appears oh, only twice every uh, royal generation, and then the young prince is allowed to come into our world and experience it and then return to his own. Now, really, do I? You can't expect us to believe a fantasy such as that. I mean, it's sheer folly. What we do that test, Terry? You might be surprised at the outcome. Forty years ago, a young prince came out of the mountains to Kathmandu. Here, in the tradition of his ancestors, he sought work as a humble servant. He was to stand the test of our world and then return to his own in the course of one more. But he did not return. Why? Because unlike his world, our world is full of temptations. Temptations which may cause even the strongest to lose their way. But why didn't he go back? Partly, Lily, because of a young woman, and very much like yourself. Uh, perhaps a little old. Oh, our fairy tale is turning into a sizzling romance? <laughs> Not sizzling, I'm afraid. Tragic. He fell in love. Yes, 
But even the gentlest of temptations must not strike a prince who would be king. In fact, his very mission was to test his strength of purpose in a world where temptation abounds. He stayed with the girl? Not quite. He ventured to take her home. To the invisible city? Yes. They began the arduous trek. The girl fell ill with fever on the way. The prince was faced with a choice, whether to fulfill his destiny and continue on alone, or to stay behind and care for the girl. Some days later, barely alive, the prince was brought to Sobhanath by Sherpas. They had found him lying unconscious next to a fresh grave on the Himal. As the moon waned, our prince joined his great love an eternity. Oh, bravo, bravo! I must say, Duan, you have capped our evening with a most remarkable story. Except for one thing. As I recall the legend, the uh, young man must return home within one month's time. Or the city that is not there ceases to exist anywhere. Now, if that is the case, then it's gone. And there is no way you can ever prove that it existed at all. Or did I miss something? <laughs> no, Harry. You have missed nothing. There is a, a simple explanation. What you have just related is not true. Simply legend, a myth. If the heir does not return in one month, he dies. The city suffers only the loss of a prince, nothing else. Duan, it is all a myth. Now come on, admit it. Is it? Well, what have you got there? This little bag holds the truth of what I say. In his last days, our young prince was cared for by the priest as Swaminath, to whom in his delirium, he related the truths that I have just told you. Well, what is in the bag? another lovely little piece of jade. <clears throat> so, what is it? This, Harry, is literally the key to the city that's not there. I believe this medallion is a virtual roadmap to the city and possesses the power to call it into the realm of visibility. May I see it, please? Certainly. Directions of some kind. Is that what you make out? Yeah. Uh, some of the symbology is similar to the Mustang stone. Hmm. Right there. That means sanctuary. High sanctuary. The bridge between our worlds is high sanctuary. That's what it says. You've been able to translate it then? The words? Yes. The meaning? But I'm close, very, very close. Johar, I was pleased with your work this evening. Thank you, Mr. Barr. You know, I must tell you, everyone in the household speaks well of you. I am pleased. Good. Now, you go straight away to bed. Tomorrow, our day begins with sunrise.
Don't say good morning or nothing. Uh, sorry, good morning, Siobhan. Good morning, Siobhan. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. Lily, please, I'll, I'll serve you. That's okay. I can manage. Good morning, McLeod's residence. Yes, sir. One moment, sir. That's a godmother for your mother. Back to work, Joe Hart. Where'd you go last night, Joe Hart? You saw me go out? Yeah. Where'd you go so late? I cannot say. You can't or you won't? It is the same. It's not the same. Joe, are you going to the market today? Yes, Andrew, I am going to the market. Mom, can I go to the market? You'll never milk? believe what's happened. What? Professor Godbelfi's medallion has been stolen. Somebody actually came into the house last night, into the bedroom. You're kidding. Why, Santa, what? That's terrible. Wow, a thief in the night. Me! Well, but the professor is absolutely beside himself. So we're not going to his house for tea. I've asked him to come here. We should try and cheer him up. Yeah, maybe I should get him a present when I go to the market with Joe. Oh, were you going to the market? Joe Hart's going to get some things for me. Here's the list. Oh, that's the money. Here's the list. Now, look, don't spend any more than what I've got written down there, okay? Uh, Mom? Mm hmm Can I go, too? Yes, go on. And when you get back, clean up right away. Don't forget, Professor Godbolt is coming to tea. Okay. Hello, Lily. Are you joining us? No. Yeah, uh, Siobhan, she, she forgot to put something on the grocery list. I'm sorry you had to be troubled. What was the item? The item was, was limes. She forgot to put limes on the grocery list. Oh, that is odd. She has already written limes on the list. Are you sure it was not something else? I'm certain. She must have forgotten. She... She's, um... Oh, I, I see, I see. Um, well, now that you are here, would you like to join us? 
The marketplace can be great fun. Sure, why not? Really? Do you think Dad would let me have a falcon? Andrew, are you not surprised to see your sister? No, she's been following us for the last half hour. Didn't you see her? Andrew McCloud, I was not following you. And no, Dad would not let you keep a falcon. Falcons are not meant to be taken into the house as pets, Andrew. Come on. <sighs> There's a kite shop in the next plaza. We can meet you there. This must be serious. I know you want an answer to your question about last night. I cannot say more than I already have. Johar? You know how we were talking in the garden about honesty? If you've done something, if you're in trouble, let me help. I care about what happens to you. Can't you understand that? You must trust me in this, Lily. I don't know why I'm getting so upset. Lily, if the situation were reversed, I would feel exactly the same as you. Please believe that. I do. Where's Joe? He'll be along in a minute. This place sure is different than Princeton. You've noticed too, huh? Yeah, but I like it. Me too. I thought you hated it. Andrew. <laughs> My falcon! Fabulous. Great, great, perfect. Great. Ah, that's perfect. Good, good, good. Perfect. Yes, yes. You look up at the falcon. Perfect.
Hey! I haven't been stiffed since 1968. I want 30 rupees. Taxi! Wait for me. Hey, Ullu. Miss you, man. As always, a pleasure to see you. The Mr. and Mrs. are waiting for you inside. Here, be a little while. Thank you. So you made diagrams of both sides of the medallion. Yes, and I uh, took photographs also. And this very day I received a computer program from America, which I am certain will crack the medallion's code. Well, it isn't so bad then, is it? I mean, even without the medallion, you still have all the information you need to search for the city. Uh, it is, I fear, not quite so simple. What? You remember when I said that the medallion is the key to the city? Oh, I remember. Somehow I must have the medallion. Well, without a medallion in hand, one cannot call the city an invisible realm. Even if one was not in the Who is it? Jar. Go away. I'm sorry, I cannot. I said go away! You have something that belongs to me. Why don't you just get out of here? Please, Lily, give me the medallion. It's too late, I've already returned it. I know you have it. It is around your neck now. Please, give it to me. No! Johar, why did you take it? Why? You've ruined everything. The medallion you have is not Professor Karpathis. There are two medallions, and this one is mine. You must give it to or me. Or what? I must have Stay it. Stay away from me! I would not hurt you, baby. I wouldn't hurt you either, Johar. But don't you understand? You've done something wrong. I can't let that just slide by. I can't let a thief stay in my parents' house. I am no thief. And I have no wish to stay. Leave. Go back to wherever it is you came from. I'll give the medallion to God, Bethy, and nobody will ever know where I got it. I promise I'll do that for you. I will live. I will go home, but not without the medallion. I cannot. Lily, please, if only you knew what it meant to me, to my... <laughs> Is finished. It is finished. And so the prince went forth as a beggar. Unbeknownst to him at that time, his experiences would prove the most rewarding of his life, and from them he would gain the wisdom and courage necessary to. The mother he could become. That's not the end. It is finished. 
No, it's not. You're not even halfway through. It's all for tonight. Lily. What? Why, Miss Joe? Why do you run away? Andrew. If you had a bag of diamonds, would you take a job as a servant? Or steal a little crummy piece of jade? The origin of the lantern is not known, although many scholars believe it may have had its beginnings in 1763, when a Gorgon platoon marched the into a valley in the Himal, serves as the repository the for all that is good in man, values or society is forgotten, all the displaced, superstitious destroyed, the possibility of an invisible nation. Scholars still puzzle at the persistence of legend. Smile. You're welcome to use my library so that you can research American facts. And I'd like you to... Mom, I have to talk to you, please. Excuse me, please. <laughs> Lily, I hope you have a very good reason for interrupting my work. Mom, the professor, the professor, he didn't believe. But remember, he wasn't even interested. But he checked out every book. Every single book. Lily, what on earth are you talking about? <sighs> the city that isn't there. It is there. And Johar didn't steal the medallion. Lily, I am in the middle of a lecture. But Mom... I don't have time for this. Mom, that's a thing. We're running out of time. Lily, I'll talk to you at home. No, oh, I think you're right. It's a very specific area, but we're dealing with matriculated students. They will have had to... Dad, Gentlemen, to my daughter, please. Lily. Dad, I, please, I have to talk to you, please. Honey, now I can't. I'm in yes, the middle of a meeting. Yes, now, because the medallion I broke wasn't the only one, and I think that Professor Hadley's might stole the other one. Excuse me, gentlemen. You disturb my meeting? You're rude. You slander Professor Hadley Smythe. What else do you plan to do? You've resented this entire trip from the very beginning, and you've never let your mother and me forget it. It's not slander, and I'm telling the truth. Johar's gonna be Johar in trouble. Johar is a thief, and you are grounded. You get yourself home right now. No! You young lady should have been left behind in Princeton. Then maybe we'd all be happier.
Well, what have we here? What a pleasant surprise. No, no, please, don't go. I think I might have just what you've been looking for. And I must admit, I'm a bit surprised you figured it out so quickly. <laughs> you, uh, you're very clever. What is it? Oh, no, no, please. Not so fast. Uh, sit down. Please, sit down. Relax. Sit. After all, you and I have a lot to talk about, don't you think? Hmm? Would you like some tea? I imagine that you're feeling uh, somewhat disappointed, not finding what you were looking for. But then again, you didn't expect me to be so foolish as to keep a medallion around here someplace now, did you? Hmm? No, of course not. Believe me, lad, it will be kept locked away somewhere safe until we need it. Until we need it? Oh, yes. No, I fully intend that you should have the medallion. That you should return safely home. But I also intend that you should have a partner. Me. Why would that take you? Because you have no other choice. Without me and the medallion, you cannot return. And if you can't return, you'll die. But fear not, you will return. I will return to the mountains. And there I will die with dignity, without betraying my city. No, oh, dear, dear. The impetuousness of youth. And so willing to throw life away. And for what, hmm? The moon is waning, Johar. And believe me, when the sky grows black and you're feeling ill and you are growing weaker by the hour, you will gladly show me the way. Never! No, you listen to me, young man. No, there is nothing. Absolutely nothing for you to be afraid of. Now, I am not an army of one marching to invade your precious city. Don't you understand that? I simply want to photograph the place. Get it? Johar? Johar! Come back here! Johar! I have seen you before here, have I not, my son? I am a traveler, father. I have not been here before. I have come to rest and pray before I go on. Will you be traveling very far, my son? Yes, father. Very far. Very far. You care to tell us where you've been? No. Yeah. 
Are you hungry? Then I think you'd better get to your room. What's this? Grocery. Uh, what is it? All the information needed to decipher the medallion. Oh, come now. We're not back on that again, are we? Harry, we have known each other for far too many years to play any games. I know what you have been up to. And I know where you intend going. I want to go too. I am not going to be cheated out of something for which I have worked most of my life. My dear Devon, I have not the slightest idea of what you are speaking about. I know the boy was here. And I know who he is. Well, Johar, yes, he was here, so... Let me get directly to the point. For years you have professed disbelief in the existence of the Invisible City. And yet I am aware that from time to time you have been conducting research in the very same subject matter. A contradiction which I dismissed as, a, as your natural academic curiosity. Besides, I, I knew I was way ahead of you. Especially since I obtained the medallion. The one which you stole from me. What? Harry, you have the medallion. But you have lost the boy. Without him? You need me. I'll find him. Maybe you will. But maybe you wouldn't. The fact, old chap, is that you haven't got much time. <clears throat> you may have a point there. What do you propose? An alliance, Harry. You have the key to the city. I have the technology to find it. My dear professor, there is enough fame and fortune in this for both of us. Goodbye, Lily. Well, speak to me, partner. Have you finished the computer workup yet? Hmm? Indeed, I have. Having the medallion saved me a great deal of time, and um, I appreciate you trusting me with it, Harry. Yes, well, <clears throat> your sincerity compels me to make a small confession, Duan. Confession? Yes, well, I'm sure you must have discovered by now that there is one vital piece of information missing. Am I correct? Oh, well, yes, I'm, I'm working on that. At, well, no point in wasting your time, old boy. The medallion will never tell you where High Sanctuary is. Only I know that. That's why I didn't mind entrusting you with it in the first place. Well, you, uh, you shock me, Harry. Well, then again, if I am to spend any time with you, I suppose I might as well get accustomed to it. 
I suppose the next thing you're going to tell me is that it was you who stole Professor Motihar's papers right after he died. As I recall, he was working on a hypothesis concerning the high sanctuary. You will get no more confessions from me, dear boy. My lips are sealed. By the way, where is the medallion now? Uh, uh, the safe, uh, in my office. Oh, hello, Ravi. Come in, laddie. What's new on the Rialto, hmm? Uh, the McLeods, uh, they're late today. They are not in at all. Haven't you heard? Heard what? It's their daughter. She disappeared last night. Disappeared? Oh, dear. Oh, dear me. You know, Duan, I have the strangest feeling that we should take a look in your safe, dear boy. Hmm? After you got the medallion from Harry, you gave it to Johar? Your life's work was in your hand and you gave it away? Why? Choices, Jeff. Choices. You're correct. My search for the medallion, the city, dominated my life to the point of exclusion of everything else. I even denied my best friend's last wish. So when Lily came to me, here it was an opportunity for me to rectify the wrong choices that I had made. Very touching, Duan. Where did you find Johar? At uh, Swaminath, the temple where his uncle died. How did Lily get involved? Oh, it was she who figured it all out as to who Johar was and uh, how Harry stole the medallion. She tried to talk to you and, and to Maureen, but uh, you being so busy, uh, she came to me. I was her last resort. We devised a scheme to get the medallion from Harry and give it to Johar. But I never imagined that, that he would take her with him. But he did. And it's your fault. It's your fault for filling her head with that cockamamie fairy tale. She thinks she's out there rescuing a prince, taking him home. The fact is she's out in a boondock somewhere with a damn beggar boy. Jeff, please, that is not helping. <sighs> Professor. How do we find them? I'm sorry, Maureen. Uh, it is obvious that she's on her way to the city that isn't there. Oh, can it, Dewan? I've heard enough of this mythical claptrap. Jeff! You may call it claptrap, but right now that is the only direction that we have to follow. The only direction? Oh, 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 that's a good one. All we have to do is look for a city nobody knows how to get to and doesn't exist in the first place. You're wrong, Jeff. The city does exist. Uh, anyway, even if it does not exist, Johar and Lily are following what is written on the jade. So they are going someplace. And I know where that place is. Well, at least, uh, almost. Well, what the hell do you mean, at least almost? Well, uh, there is a slight problem. Harry, it appears, holds a trump card that is yet to play. Seems like such a long time ago. Don't be angry at me, Johar. I'm not angry. I'm ashamed at how happy I am to see you. <coughs> I bought a ticket to Janakpur last night. Thought you were going on the train. Then I saw you going on this bus. Adlis Smythe knew I came by train. I couldn't go back the same way. What 
now. We enjoy this time together. Then, I must go. So all the directions on the medallion to the city are from High Sanctuary? Exactly. And only Harry knows where High Sanctuary is. And what's keeping you, Harry? Why aren't you out there taking your precious photographs? Well, unfortunately, I only have half the puzzle. Duan here has the other. An uneasy alliance, to be sure, but we need each other. Well, the only alliance that I'm forming is with the police. Jeff, don't do that. Jeff, if you get the police involved in this, you may never see Lily again. Is that a threat, Harry? Indeed it is. If you think the police can lead you to High Sanctuary, by all means, stay on the line. Uh, yes, yes. I I'd like to report a missing child. Jeff, yes, yes, I'll hold. Jeff, I haven't risked my career and reputation on something I wasn't absolutely convinced was true. Now, at sunset tomorrow, the city will disappear and Lily will disappear along with it. Jeff, put the phone down. soon, Lily. You can wire your parents from Simra and catch the next coach back to Kathmandu. It's the right choice, Lily. comes whenever that is. If the wolves don't get me first. There are no wolves. Well, Yeti then! I will take you as far as High Sanctuary. The monks there will send a message back to your parents. Is it far? It will be near dawn tomorrow before we reach there. We'll climb mountains in the dark. Isn't that dangerous? Yes. Very. Why, my daughter is out there in a trail somewhere? Jeff, there's no way in the world you can fly a helicopter up here after dark. Harry, how much farther to High St. Joy? That's not part of the deal, Luan. I'll tell you when we get there. Trust me. They say they are looking for a lost child, Holy One. They wish to spend the night and resume their search by the first light of day. Where was this child lost? Kathmandu, Holy One. Kathmandu? Does this story 
have the ring of truth, Arjun. It does not. What am I to do? Make them comfortable, my son. But do not allow them to see the prince. I pray, Holy One, that we shall see the prince. Don't go so fast. Slow down. Slow down. It gets worse before it gets better. Calm down. Hold my hand, Lily. I don't think I can take much more of this. Just hold tight to me. You'll, you'll be safe. Rest. Just rest. How far did we fall? Can we get up? I do not know. I will look in a moment. Just now, my heart is also pounding. Joe, I really am sorry. You have nothing to be sorry for. I am on my way home. And that is thanks to you. If I reach my city, you will have saved my life. In Charloon, we believe that when a person saves another's life, their souls become as one. Charloon? Is that the name of your city? Yes. I like the sound of it. Were you looking for the little beggar boy, Brother Arjun? <laughs> I was. I was indeed, Johar. <laughs> I am not home yet, my friend. There is still a long way to go and not much time. Well, I fear your journey may be even longer than you know. For you cannot pass through Teng Boche. Why is this, Arjun? Because of the young girl hiding there behind the rock. She's the one called Lily. Is she not? I'm Lily. Lily, I know not why you have run away and I shall not ask. But your parents are at the Lamasery. They arrived by helicopter with two others, Professors Godbothe and Hadley Smythe. I think his interests go well beyond your whereabouts, Lily. We know what he seeks. It is as you suspect, Arjun. In that case, Johar, I must take the girl to the nunnery and hide her there. For if they see her, they will know you are nearby and seek you out. No. I'll go with Johar. Is this your wish, Johar? That is in my heart, Arjun. But it cannot be. 
There is no time. You must go. What is it? I don't know. Go, now. Stay here, Lily. My worst fears are realized. The scoundrel has taken all of my notes. Then we've lost the children. Perhaps not. Though if we fly in the direction of the city, I wager we'll see the children and Harry along the way. But what about your notes? Well, I, I know the approximate distance and direction to the city. Well, however, that's all based on an assumption. Assumption? What assumption? That this place, Temboche, is in fact high sanctuary. You are unaccustomed to the altitude. I'm just slowing you down. Go on without me. <laughs> For now, we stay together. But understand, Lily, I must be home by sunset or I will die. <laughs> What if I am able to keep up with you? What then? 
Will you let me enter your city with you, Joa? If we reach the city together, I have decided the choice will be yours. What if the choice is yours? If there were no other considerations other than the two of us, I would take you through the gates of Charloon and keep you by my side till the very end of our days. But there are other considerations, Lily. And that is why I shall leave the decision to you. I've only to climb to the top of the plateau. My valley is just beyond. From here, the trail is easy. Then we can get there. I've kept up with you. The most difficult part is yet to come. I thought you said the trail was easy. I was not speaking of the trail.
I am home. Charlene is there? Yes. It is always there. Even when one cannot see it or touch it, it is always there. Then I'm home too. Your decision is made? Yes. The sun is almost gone. Come on. Please, let's go. Yes. It is time. I will say only this. Make your choice, not upon that which is offered you, but upon that which you may offer others. Which world needs you more, Lily McLeod? be with you, Lily McLeod. And I will always be with you, Prince Johan. Wait for me. Oh, that's wonderful, Dewan. We won't have to say goodbye after all. Tell me something, Dewan. When you get to Princeton, are you going to teach mythology as fiction or a fact? Well, what's myth shall remain myth, but what's real, I shall teach as fact. And exactly what myths are real, Professor? Well, uh, Jetty, for instance, the abominable snowman. 
It's fact. Any others, Duan? <laughs> well, that's all I can think of for now. Uh, the rest are all just myths. Pure fiction. So I guess we're going home, huh? Yeah. You gonna miss Nepal? Every day of my life. Until I come back. <laughs>